Hello, good evening all of you. Hello, good evening everyone. One second everyone. Good evening, good evening everyone. I hope you can hear my voice. Hello everyone. Good evening all of you. I hope you can hear my voice. Can I have some quick comments please? That if you can hear my voice clearly or not. Okay, before we are jumping into the topic that is Plant Kingdom today, uh, let me introduce, uh, this is Vaishali Kamdar from uh, Spark Academy and today we are going to discuss about Plant Kingdom uh, from the first unit that is Living World and Diversity from that one topic from that that is Plant Kingdom. And before jumping into the uh, topic, let me remind you all of you, you can follow Spark Academy on sparkacademyonline.com and Spark Academy uh, is there on Instagram, Telegram, and Facebook, Facebook, or whatever you uh, wish, you can follow us on that. So let me remind you about the plant kingdom that is first unit in that diversity in the living world is your unit name and chapter, there are three chapters involved in this unit, living world, biological classification, and plant kingdom. So we have discussed about living world last week and biological classification i'll come up with this topic also and plant kingdom today we are going to discussing uh, we are going to discuss about plant kingdom that is giving you around three questions so three into four that will give you around 12 marks for neat exam so do not go anywhere this one hour guys uh, stay tuned stay uh, tuned with stay connected with me now uh, this one hour so all your uh, doubts of plant kingdom will be cleared then so those who have not joined, ask your friends, uh, those who have joined, ask your friends to join uh, because this will be going to, this is one shot program, one shot uh, lecture of Plant Kingdom. So I'm going to discuss everything about the Plant Kingdom today. So I hope you can hear my voice guys clearly and you can uh, see the screen also clearly. So can I have some quick comments, those who have joined, those who have joined, please, uh, Write something in a quick comment that you can hear my voice clearly or not. Yes, so before, um, let me tell you that uh, um, before that, that we have our app that is Park Academy app. So you can go through your Play Store and download this app from Play Store that is Park Academy. You just need to think, you just need to focus on the logo of Spark Academy and this is our logo, blue color logo, what you can see. So just check this logo on Play Store and Play Store, this one and download Spark Academy app. After downloading it, you will be having idea that uh, this, uh, what type of discounts we are offering for the uh, different, different courses. Or else you can uh, you can call on the numbers given in the scrolling out in your screen, numbers scrolling on your screen for admissions. So 
so uh, after that uh, if you join any of the course you will be having free handwritten notes free study materials and uh, pyqs and free mock test available so now let us start plant kingdom so kingdom planty that means chlorophyll bearing organism we are going to discuss here okay chlorophyll bearing organism they are involved in a plant so plant kingdom is divided into two main types cryptogamy and phanerogamy cryptogamy that means plants without seed without seed and phanerogamy that means plant with seed without seed plants can be divided into thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta so this thallophyta was again divided into algae and fungi but this fungi is nowadays it is uh, we are writing we are having a separate kingdom for this fungi so we are not including this fungi in this kingdom now uh, uh, as of i mean uh, is revised uh, 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 and this fungi as they are not chlorophyll bearing organisms you can't consider fungi in plant kingdom so thallophyta have only i mean right now instead of thallophyta here we are replacing it with algae so algae bryophytes and pteridophytes so these three are type of without seeds plants without seeds so bryophyte pteridophyte till this point they do not produce seeds then if they produce seeds then on the basis of whether seed is enclosed or whether seed is whether it is enclosed or or it is naked on the basis of that phanerogamy can be divided into two types that is gymnosperms and angiosperm gymnos that means naked and sperm that means seed angiosperms that means flower bearing seed uh, or seed enclosed inside the fruit angiosperm again divided into monocotyledons and dicotyledons okay guys so monocot dicot so we will be going we will be going to discuss all these points in this lecture so uh, those who are not connected please connect yourself to this lecture this will be going to very good lecture and you will be finding it's uh, it is very easy to remember about plant kingdom and then we are starting with first member of plant kingdom that is algae so you can consider them lower plants so they are characterized by let me change the color so algae they have characteristics feature uh, algae are chlorophyll bearing and simple thalloid structure now what is thalloid structure thalloid that means it is it looks like tree it looks like tree but it is not a tree not true tree okay it looks like tree but not true tree what is the meaning of true tree tree should have this uh, root stem branches leaves flowers fruit all this at least root stem branches it should have but this a uh, simple type of thalloid structure they'll be showing some root like structure but they are not actual root they will be showing some shoot like structure but they'll be not actually stem so this type of structure simple structure it is known as thalloid okay they are autotrophic organism their size ranges from microcellular microscopic unicellular to a filamentous form so we have example of unicellular algae unicellular algae unicellular example of microscopic unicellular that is chlamydomonas and colonial form this is colonial form so colonial form such as volvox this is volvox and filamentous form starting with eulotrix uh, and spirogyra so filamentous this is spirogyra this is filamentous algae then massive plant like body like kelps massive plant like body like kelps so massive body will be uh, example of that it is kelp their body is unicellular in chlamydomonas colonial in volvox filamentous in spirogyra thalloid in sargassum algae are covered over by the mucilage 
mucilage which protects them the epiphytic growth and decaying uh, effect of the water as they are mostly prominenting and water only so uh, as they are covered by this mucilage layer so they will be protected from the water uh, from the decaying effect of the water this algae can reproduce uh, by three means vegetative sexual or asexual so vegetatively they can be by fragmentation mostly and asexual by zoospore and sexual by fusion of some gametes fusion of uh, gametes by some uh, see if gametes are of same type this fusion can be of three types fusion can be of three types uh, of similar size gametes are of similar size then it is known as isogametes example is chlamydomonas if gametes are of this similar size then it is known as an isogamous and oogamous in that always female is having large female with large non-motile spore just like egg this is female large non-motile egg and male will be having small motile spore okay with motility with flagellite will be having so just like egg and sperm it will be like that only this type of fusion is called as Oogamous in case of algae. So male and female will be there. An example of these type of re reproduction, these type of algae which reproduce by oogamous, they, that is volvox and fuca. Then first, the algae can be divided into three types. This algae can be divided into three types on the basis of which pigments it will be carrying. So chlorophyacy that means green algae. So the member of chlorophyacy are commonly called green algae. The plant body may be unicellular, colonial, and filamentous. The major pigment, the major pigments are chlorophyll A and B. Remember pigments of each type of algae. So major pigment here. Pigment involved in green algae giving green color the uh, chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b okay so most of the members have one or more storage bodies these called pyrenoids located in the chloroplast and pyrenoid contains protein beside the starch so these uh, storage form of um, food storage they can be it can be done by pyrenoid bodies and pyrenoid bodies that means pyrenoid that means proteins plus starch so mo most of the time it is covering them with starch and inside it is core it is made up of proteins okay so storage food, they store their food in form of starch. Some algae may store food in form of oil droplets also. Cell wall composition, green algae usually have a rigid cell wall made up of inner layer of cellulose and outer layer of vectors. So this is a green algae same. So reproduction in green algae, it is done by vegetative reproduction, usually takes by fragmentation. Asexual reproduction by spores like zoospores. And a planospores, uh, high planospore and uh, echinates. So sexual reproduction may be isogamous and isogamous and oogamous. Example of chlorophyacy, it is chlorophyacea, uh, it is chlamydomonas, volvox, eulothrix, pyrogyra, and cara. So we have five examples of green algae. Then phyacea, brown color algae. Name itself suggests brown algae, that means uh, it's pigment. Okay, re uh, responsible pigments here, major pigments are chlorophyll A and C, carotenoid xanthophyll, chlorophyll A, C, carotenoid xanthophyll, A, not B, C, carotenoid, and xanthophyll. So, all together, this is known as fucosanthin. This is known as commonly, it is called fucosanthin. Okay, the members of fucosanthin, commonly they are called brown algae, habitat of brown algae, mostly they are marine. 
mostly they are marine size and forms they show great variation is there in their size and forms body consists of the branch filamentous structure to uh, profuse branch from a represented kelps the plant body is usually attached to the substratum by hold fast see the substratum that means rock like thing any ground portion see for example this is a rock oh, over that this algae is growing so they can they can hold the substratum by this type of structure by this type of structure root like structure that is called hold fast here and they have a stalk this is they have a stalk and this type that is leaf like type okay leaf like type so a uh, photosynthetic organs are uh, organ called the frond this type as so you see stalk is known as type and a leaf like photosynthetic synthetic organ it is called frond mainly involved pigments are commonly known as fucoxanthin here then stored food food is stored in a complex carbohydrate which may be form of laminarin and mannitol laminarin and mannitol cell wall composition the cell wall has cellulosic wall usually covered from outside by gelatinous by algin by algin gelatinous algin so overall cell wall is made up of cellulose but it is covered by algin then next it is red algae red algae common name rhodophyta so rhodophyta are common co commonly called red algae because of the predominant red pigment it is r phycoerythrin it is phycoerythrin so habitat here major of the red algae marine except for few fresh water species only we have few fresh water species and uh, they occur in both well lightened regions close to the surface of the water and also at the great depth in the ocean where relatively little light penetrates that means see though they will be growing uh, see for example this is marine this is ocean in that they can be grow at the low level of the where light could not penetrate there is no penetration of light still they can grow in that condition so they occur in both well lightened region close to the surface of the water and also at the great depth in the oceans where relatively little light penetrates okay now major pigments they possess chlorophyll a and b and phycoerythrin the red color of the red algae is due to abundant formation of phycoerythrin due to abundant formation of phycoerythrin most mostly it possesses a and b plus phycoerythrin but most of the time most of the due to abundant formation of the red color it is due to phycoerythrin storage food food is stored as floridian starch remember about storage food okay in case of green algae pigment was chlorophyll a and b and in that pyrenoid form is the storage food in case of brown algae uh, it is due to uh, chlorophyll a and chlorophyll c xanthophyll and carotenoid overall it is known as phycoxanthin so the, in that uh, storage form is lamiran and laminaril and mannitol so here very simple this floridian starch what is it it's constituted of very similar to that of amylopectin and glycogen in the structure the cell wall it is made up of cellulose pectin and polysulfate esters some red algae have an uh, uh, infraction of uh, calcium carbonate so they'll be having caco3 calcium carbonate cover over their walls deposition over in their wall they appear coral like and they are called coralline coralline algae produce limestone and they are important component of the reef formation along with the corals flagella is absent in a member of the class here flagella is absent class flagella in what in case of reproductive in case of spores spores do not bear any flagella here then next description next part it is about bryophytes guys wait a second
bryophytes. Bryophyte is a division. Bryophyte is a division of non-vascular plants having an embryo stage. See what is bryophytes? Bryophytes they usually occur in cool, damp, and shady areas. They are known as amphibians of plant kingdoms. Why amphibians of plant kingdom? Amphibians, that means what? Whenever we use amphi, that means there should be some in between type of thing, in between type of thing. Uh, I mean, in two things, it can't grow, it can be grown. Like uh, those organisms, those animals which can grow in water and plant, uh, sorry, water and land, they are called amphibians. Like here, this plant, this member of a plant kingdom, it can grow, it can live both on land and water. That's why and for water, it is responsible, it is dependent on water for sexual reproduction. So, it needs uh, water for sexual reproduction. So, bryophytes are known as amphibian of plant kingdom. Very, very important point, guys. You need to remember this. Characteristic feature of bryophytes. Bryophyte is a division of non-vascular plant having an embryo stage in their developmental process. See, still there is no vascular system developed. What is a vascular system? That means what? That means xylem and phloem. So still this point, there is no xylem, no phloem. No, no vascular uh, system developed. No development of vascular system. Plant body is more differentiated than the algae. See, in algae there is thalloid structure. Now this thallus-like, the plant body is thallus-like and it is attached to the substratum by rhizoid. Remember in algae we have discussed that this uh, they are attached to the substratum by hold fast. Hold fast, it shows somewhat root like, but it was not root. Now, this is much developed than this hold fast, and it becomes rhizoid here. So, rhizoids may be unicellular or multicellular. Roots are absent here. Bryophytes lack two, they like, lack two roots, stem, and leaves. They may possess root like stem like leaf like structure. So, exactly the same type of structure can be present when you look. It, uh, it seems it is some type of plant only, but uh, yeah, it is plant only, it is plant body only, but it is somewhat uh, thallus like plant. So, they have no specialized tissue for the conduction of water and other substances from one part of the body to the another. So, no specialized tissue like xylem and phloem. So, this is life cycle of a bryophyte. See, guys, for this class for this point for plant kingdom i like to introduce you two terms that is sporophyte and gametophyte sporophyte and gametophyte see sporophyte it is diploid stage So, 2N and gametophyte is, is haploid stage. Do not forget this point, guys. Do not forget this point. This is very important. Otherwise, you could not uh, explain life cycle of any of the plant, uh, any member of the plant kingdom. So, sporophyte that is diploid stage, okay, and gametophyte is this haploid stage. In sporophyte, there will be formation of spores. And gametophytes, there will be formation of gametes. What will be produced here? Spore will be produced. Spores will be produced. And in haploid gametophyte, they will produce gametes. Gametes will be produced. Okay. So, till this point, at least you remember till this point, then you will uh, come to know about this bryophytic life cycle. Look here, it is haplon diplontic life cycle most of the time. So, half of the life cycle, it is haplontic. Half life cycle, it is diplontic. That means half of the stages are sporophytic and half they are gametophytic. Look here, 
if it is sporophytic stage if it is sporophytic stage look here this is sporophytic stage okay sporophyte this is sporophytic stage so sporophytic stage in that meiosis occurs this in that meiosis occurs at sporophytic stage that means it is 2n in nature okay this is 2n this is 2n it will undergo meiosis to form spores okay it will undergo meiosis to form spores and spores will be haploid it will undergo meiosis to form too many spores and these spores are haploid this haploid spores they germinate Haploid spores germinate to give a rise to type of body depending on their structure. Two type of body, male and female gametophyte. They will germinate. They will germinate into female gametophyte. That means female haploid plant and male haploid plant. This is haploid plant body. Remember, this is haploid plant body. From this body. From this female body, there will be formation of female gametes, and from this male body, there will be formation of male gametes. Okay, they'll produce male gametes and female gametes. Will gametes will fuse? Remember, fusion with occurs. Fu fusion only occurs only with the gametes. Spores never fuse. Spores never fuses. Spores they never fuse. Spores will germinate. Spores germinate directly and gametes fuses. So this gametes will be fused and fusion gives you guys zygote. Zygote is 2N. And if the zygote undergo multicellular stage by mitosis, this will give you give a rise to diploid plant body that is sporophytic body. Okay, guys. I hope you are understanding this prop, uh, this proper uh, life cycle of uh, bryophyte. See, look here. The spores will germinate to give male and female body. Male body contains archegonium. Female body con sorry, male body contains anthradium, and female body contains archegonium. Inside archegonium, there will be eggs. Egg will be their egg. And in anthradium, there will be production of sperms, and the sperms will transport through water. For this, they require water because sperms they are, I mean, uh, they might not be motile. So in that condition, fertilization of gametes occur, and there will be formation of zygote. That is two n zygote, which will undergo mitosis. Okay, to give a rise, sporophytic diploid body. And the spores will undergo germination to give a rise. Again, here also mitosis because spores are N and you will be having haploid gametophyte only. Any doubt, guys? If you have any doubt, you can post, uh, you can write in form of chat that, ma'am, uh, we, we uh, couldn't understand. Please repeat it again. See, I'm going to repeat this haploid diploid life cycle again and again during this lecture because this is only, I mean, this is very important for, for exam point of view. Then about liverworts, this is bryophyte only. So characteristics, uh, uh, bryophyte can be divided into two, liverwort and mosses. So liverwort characteristics, habitat of liverworts grows usually in moist and shady uh, habitats such as banks of streams and marshy grounds and damp soil, bark of tree and deep, deep in the woods. And body feature, the plant body of liverwort is they are thalloid like Marchantia. The thallus is dorsiventral and closely appears to substratum, closely appressed to the substratum. This is thalloid of Marchantia, Marchantia male plant, Marchantia female plant. You can see here. Two types of plants and that's why only I have included this you can see they are somewhat looking like a tree but they are actually not properly grown trees they have root like stem like leaves like body okay so look here this is thallus this is thallus and this is anthradiophore and these are rhizoids small small rhizoids root like structure and this is gamma cup this liverwort they can also i mean gamma cups are also there this is a sexual means of uh, reproduction 
here in entradium there will be formation of gametes in archegonium this is female plant and there will be formation of uh, 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 egg inside the archegonium reproduction can be of two types see as i have told you asexual by mainly by the gameta or that is also known as gamy asexual reproduction is takes place by fragmentation of the lie or by the formation of gamy gamy is a small green multicellular asexual bud you can see small small tree like small small tree like structure look here that's why i have included this picture here clear picture of that so this is gamy so this type of gamy you can observe here okay so this gamy are small green multicellular asexual buds and which are born dorsally inside the gamma cups this is gamma cup inside that they are born so and located on the thallus the mature gamma is separate from the parent body and germinate to form a new individual mature gamma is separate and just like a bryophyllum just like a bryophyllum in case of leaves of bryophyllum how it reproduces by vegetative means the same way this is vegetative or asexual means of reproduction in case of bryophyte especially liverwort then sexual reproduction the male and female sex organs are produced either on the same on uh, or on the different thallus fertilization produces zygote which grows to form diploid sporophyte each sporophyte is differentiated into foot seta and capsule after meiosis spores are produced within the capsule the spores germinate to form free living gametophyte hello everyone guys hello everyone those who have joined say at least hello in chat yes hello everyone then mosses characteristic feature of mosses the predominant stage of life cycle of mosses is gametophytic stage gametophytic that means again i am recalling you guys gametophytic that means two end stage it is predominant it which causes Uh, which consists of two stages protonema stage and leafy stage so it is first stage protonema is pro first stage and develops directly from the spore so when spore germinate spores are spores are haploid so when the spores germinate spores that means haploid spores when germinate will give a rise first stage that is called protonema stage okay so it is creeping green branch and the frequently filamentous stage and then it is the second stage then this protonema is converted into second stage that is leafy stage so which develops from the secondary protonema as a lateral bud and they consist of a right slender axis bearing spirally arranged leaves so they are attached to the soil through a multicellular branched rhizoids so this stage bears the sex organ so they bear sex organ are uh, see you can see here this is foot seta so this is tree like gametophyte and sporophytic stage in that this the, these two are, these are called seta the foot seta and capsule this is capsule this is gametophytic stage next pteridophyte habitat pteridophyte the pteridophytes are found in cool damp shady places though some may flourish well in the sandy soil condition also feature they are first terrestrial plants which possess vascular tissue see now they possess till gymnosperm we have we have mentioned that till the gymnosperm there is they have lack of vascular tissue no xylem and no phloem now xylem and phloem formation started first terrestrial plants which possess vascular tissue it is a division of seedless vascular plants so hence commonly known as vascular cryptogam so they have well developed vascular system the dominant plant body is sporophytic that means two end sporophytic that means 2n 
so which is differentiated into true root stem and leaves so these organs possess well differentiated vascular tissue the leaves in the pteridophytes are small always small they are called microphylls as in selaginella or large see mostly small or large they are called macrophylls in case of ferns so selaginella you can see here selaginella in this diagram they will be it will be carrying small small leaves Sporophyte bears sporangia and develops associated with leaf like uh, appendages called sporophyll. In some pteridophytes, sporophyll form distinct compact structure that is known as strobili or cones. Seeds are absent here and uh, uh, they produce naked embryos called spores. So, homosporous pteridophytes, they bear spores that are uh, of same type. They produce bisexual gametophytes. Heterosporous pteridophytes, they bear two kinds of spores, microspores as well as megaspores and they produce unisexual gametophyte. So, Selaginella, Salvenia, Mar uh, Marshallia, they are example of heterosporous pteridophyte. The sporangia produces spores by means, uh, by meiosis in spore mother cell. So the spores germinate to give rise in conspicuous. See, remember, always remember, spores are spores are haploid. So they germinate to, to give rise in conspicuous, small but multicellular, free living, mostly photosynthetic thalloid, but not free like thalloid gametophyte that is called prothallus. So the gametophyte prothallus bear male and female sex organ called anthradia and archegonia respectively. Anthradia are small and sessile archegonia are partially embedded. Archegonium neck is four rowed. Fusion of male gamete with the egg present in the archegonia result in the formation of zygote. Zygote thereafter produces multi well differentiated sporophyte which is a dominant phase of the pteridophyte. Remember, in case of gym, gymnosperm, we have mentioned that dominant phase is gametophyte. Here, dominant phase. Dominant phase of pteridophyte, it is multicellular sporophytic stage. That means 2N stage. Diploid stage, it is multicellular. Diploid stage is multicellular here. Look into the, uh, this diagram, guys, of their life cycle. So, look here. This zygote will undergo, zygote is 2N. It will undergo sporophytic and this is dominant. This is dominant phase here. It looks like a 2 tree. But in case of gametophyte, it will be having prothallus type. This is thalloid. This is thalloid. Okay, gametophytic stage is thalloid, but though it will bear archegonia and anthradia to form, to produce these gametes and gametes fertilize to give a rise zygote and in sporophytic uh, phase, sporangia inside the sporangia meiosis occurs and there will be production of spores. When spores germinate, they'll give a rise prothallus. So, however, few plants are heterosporous. They produce two types of spores, microspores and megaspores. The megaspores and microspores germinate to give a rise, female and male gametophyte. So, if it is megaspore, it will give a rise, female, female gametophyte and microspore, male gametophyte. The female gametophyte is in this Plants are retained on the parent sporophyte and variable periods. The de development of zygote into the young embryo takes place within the female gametophyte. Now next it is about gymnosperms guys. So we have done algae bryophyte uh, sorry algae bryophyte and pteridophyte now it is about phanerogen that means seed producing plants so in that we have two types gymno gymnosperm and angiosperm so this is gymnosperm the gymnosperms that means naked seed producing plants 
which ovules are not enclosed see remember seeds are mature ovules and fruits are mature ovary but this these ovules are not covered by ovary wall by any ovary and wall so it remains exposed both after and before fertilization so the seeds that develop post fertilization are not covered gymnosperms include medium size trees or tall trees and shrubs or one of the gymnosperms the giant redwood tree it's a sequoia is one of the tallest tree species the root are generally tap root roots in some genera have fungal association with the with mycorrhiza while some others see remember in case of pinus they have fungal association pinus they have fungal association with myco uh, that is called mycorrhiza rhiza and cycas some small specialized roots a kerala kerala roots are associated with nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria so remember pinus in is example of mycorrhiza that means fungal association and cycas cyanobacteria association with cyanobacteria The stem are unbranched or branched, unbranched in cycas, branched in pinus. Leaves may be simple or compound. Cycas, uh, the pinnated leaf persists for few years. Uh, the leaves in gymnosperms are well adapted to withstand extreme temperature, humidity, and wind. In conifers, the needle-like leaves reduces the surface area. The thick, their thick critic, or cuticle and sunken stomata also help to reduce water loss. Then gymnosperms are heterosporous. They produce haploid micro, microspore and megaspores. Two kind of spores are produced within the sporangia that are born on the sporophylls, and they are arranged spirally along an axis. So this uh, spirally arranged sporophyll uh, sporangia it is known as strobili or con. Strobili bearing microsporophyll, microsporangia. And microsporangiated male strobili or male cone. Microspores develop into the male gametophyte generation. The reduced gametophyte, it, this, they are called pollen grain. Development of pollen grain takes place within the microsporangia. This is about uh, life cycle of in, uh, gymnosperm. Look here, life cycle of gymnosperm. So remember, till gymnosperm it is single fertilization. That means fertilization occurs only once in case of gymnosperm. Also in Archegonia, we are starting from this. A male gametophyte, male gametophyte and female, uh, sorry, female gametophyte and male gametophyte in female Archegonia persist and male in Thradia. Inside that there will be male gametes, uh, male gametes and female gametes will be there. So fusion of that will give you zygote. Zygote will give you embryo. Okay, embryo. Then seed shedded for from the sporophyte. This embryo will undergo sporophytic stage. So sporophyte that is to and adapted to the life on the land. So this is sporophytic stage, diploid stage, which pairs two. Uh, which uh, which can, which bears two types. I mean, megastrobili and microstrobili. So sporophytic stage. So in that megasporangium is there and microsporangium is there. If both is there on one plant, then it is known as heterosporous. Okay. So then uh, it will undergo meiosis to give us megaspores and microspores, and they'll germinate to give gametophytic stage. Now it's about the geosperm. So habitat, the angiosperms are exceptionally large group of plants occurring in wide variety of habitat. They range in the size from tiny, almost microscopic wolfia to the tall trees like eucalyptus. So it is 100 meter uh, over tall over the 100 meters. Characteristic feature, these are flower bearing plants and fruits, seeds are enclosed inside the fruits. That means seeds are enclosed inside the ovary. Mature ovary is your fruit. They are the most recently and highly evolved plant. So they have both microsporophylls and megasporophylls. They are specialized. 
in angiosperm of flowering plants of pollen grains and ovule that develop in a specialized culture called flowers see this is why i have included the seed flower this that is known as reproductive part of plant of which plant angiosperm so they have a specialized structure flower inside flower they'll be having two specialized structure that is called carpel and stamen so angiosperms are exceptionally large group they provide us a food for us food for the fuel medicine several other commercially important products so they are divided into two classes the dicot and monocot dicot that means seeds will be having two cotyledons and in monocot it will be having only single cotyledon mostly dicot plants will be showing dorsi ventral i mean reticular type of variation they might contain tetramerous or pentamerous flowers monocot will be having parallel variation they might contain trimerous flowers so we will come to this point we will discuss about this trimerous and this variation part in all these things in angiosperms i mean in uh, morphology of flowering plants so now just Briefly, I am briefing you about the reproductive part of a flowering plant. So, in that, male sex organ is known as stamen, and female sex organ is called pistil, pistil or carpel. So, look here. This is stamen. Stamen. It has two parts, anther and filament. Inside anther, there will be formation of pollen grains. <coughs> So generally, uh, see, in, in female sex organ, it is known as pistil. This is pistil. So this is sigma, style, and ovary. It has three parts: sigma, that is stage, over, uh, and below that uh, long, slender style, and below that uh, swollen ovary. Inside the ovary, generally each ovule has megaspore mother cell that undergoes meiosis to form haploid megaspores. Three of these. See, always result of meiosis is four cells. Among the three cells will degenerate. Three will degenerate, and one divide to form embryo sac. So this is actually haploid embryo sac. So each embryo sac has three cell egg apparatus that is forming by synergies and egg cells. These two are synergies, and one is egg cell, and three antipodal cell. And two polar nuclei, so actually it is known as eight nucleated. Eight nucleated seven cell stage. In angiosperm, fertilization occurs two times. That's why it is the best example. It is the common. It is main feature of angiosperm. That is double fertilization. How fertilization occurs two times? See, look here. When pollen grains are shedded, and from the pollen grains, there will be release of male gamete. I mean, during the Uh, after pollination, male gamete. There will be two male gametes will be coming here. One male gamete will fuse here, and one male gamete will fuse here. So this is polar nuclei, p po, uh, polar nuclei, p uh, primary endospore nucleus plus so, uh, plus male gamete will give you triple fusion. Triple fusion. as there will be formation of three n structure after that and this is egg cell that is n only and plus male gamete will give you syngamy that is zygote here zygote will be formed so this is how two times fertilization occurs so this is life cycle of an angiosperm look here so this uh, this is flower bearing plant we are uh, from a flower we will see this is female female plant uh, sorry female part that is uh, carpel and male plant that is semen so inside uh, inside the semen there will be pro, pro, microsporangium it will be containing macrosporangium and inside that microspores will be formed so microspores uh, mature microspores they will be mature to form pollen grains 
This is pollen grain that means it is male gametophyte. This pollen grain is shedded and it will be released and it will reach to the stigma. And stigma, there is uh, inside the stig uh, stigma style and ovary. Inside the ovary, there is megaspore mother cell. This megaspore mother cell will undergo meiosis to form embryo sac. Inside that, there will be one egg cell. Okay, this male gamete will fuse this uh, fuse with this egg cell. Male gamete will fuse with this egg cell to give two enzygote, and the zygote will form undergo multicellular stage that is known as embryogeny to give a rise a uh, complete plant. So plant life cycle and alternation of generation. You can see this type of alternation of generation in case of plant only. What is alternation of generation? Half of the path. Or sometimes it contains both the stages, both the stage, stages deployed as well as haploid. So plant body represents gametophyte. This plant body, if haploid stage is dominating, it is known as haplontic life cycle. If diploid stage is dominating, that is called diplontic life cycle. So haplontic life cycle, look here. So in this type of particular life cycle, uh, you can see diploid stage. Diploid stage only till only for the zygote formation, then zygote immediately undergo formation of uh, spores. Zygote immediately undergo formation of spores that is haploid and this. Haploid will germinate to give rise multicellular gametophyte and gametogenesis. That means uh, it will be producing gametes, and this gametes will fuse. Gametes will fuse to give rise thin gametes to give rise zygote formation. So most of the time, algae possess this type of haplontic life cycle. Diplontic life cycle. So only diplontic. That means diploid stage. It is dominating here. Diploid stage is dominating and haploid it is only till the gamete formation. This gamete directly uh, after gametes, uh, inside the gametophyte gametes will be formed and it will undergo directly sting gamete to give a rise zygotic stage that is diploid stage. So type wherein the diploid sporophyte is dominating and photosynthetic independent phase of the plant. Gametophyte phase is represented by the single to the few cell haploid gametophyte only. This type of example again you can see in some of the algae that is puca species representing this pattern. In this addition the seed bearing plants like gymnosperm and geosperm follow this pattern with the some variations. Then haplon diplontic cycle mostly you can find this type of thing in bryophytes and teridophytes. Some of the teridophytes so bryophyte and teridophyte interestingly exhibit both the condition, intermediate condition that is known as haplodiplontic cycle. Okay, both the stages are equal, half half this portion. So now, again I am reminding you all of you, link is given in the description box about the Spark store. You can choose any of the courses from the Spark store and purchase, buy it right now from the description box. Uh, in the description box, you will be finding this link. Admissions are open right now for short term, for long term, for regular coaching. So you can join any of the branch, Narayan Gura and Mehdi Patnam. So online coaching is also open. We are also right now open for on online uh, coaching also for need for uh, um, GA mains and for MSET. So on daily basis, we'll be having you'll be having live sessions. On this live session will be in uh, will remain in recorded form in your app. This is how on daily basis we are considering. Uh, we are taking tests and uh, we are giving assignments. We are giving assignments. Sorry, guys. So. Uh, our methodology is basic concept, shortcut methods, all model question papers, exercise questions, PYQs, chapter wise test, weekend test, and grand test. Test analysis is done. So, this is first question, guys. First question for uh, P from PYQs. Besides paddy fields, cyanobacteria are also found inside the vegetative part of what? 
cyanobacteria are also found in vegetative part of what so answer is guys in cycas specialized roost as we have discussed right now only we have mentioned it in one of our slide that is it's a symbiotic relationship with cycas and nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria then isogamous condition that means similar kind of or similar size spores similar size gametes sorry same size gametes condition with non flagellated gametes is found in spirogyra fucus volvox or chlamydomonas remember i have given you idea that in these type of algae they will be not having any flagellated gametes this is in spirogyra sexual reproduction occurs through the conjugation gametes are non flagellated and morphologically they are similar so this that is isogamous volvox and fucus are example of oogamous and chlamydomonas is example of isogamous flagellated gametes then next question read the following question uh, statements from a to e statements a to e i mean for 1 to 5 and answer the question which follows them so what which of these are correct statements how many of these are how many of the above statements are correct that you need to find out so the liverwort and mosses ferns gametophytes are free living gymnosperms are um, some ferns are heterosporous yeah so some uh, sexual reproduction in fucus volvox and albigo is oogamous the sporophyte in liverwort so among these which see liverwort and ferns are gametophytic and free living in ferns parophyte is free living so answer is 3 3 of these are correct which of the following is not correctly matched for the organism and it is cell wall de uh, degrading enzyme so plant cell cell wall is made up of cellulose and cellulase correct algae cell wall is made up of chitin so it is chitin uh, sorry algae also cell wall, cell wall is made up of cellulose only so methylase methylase the uh, is wrong here methylase is wrong here so for b we our option is b the plant body is theloid plant body is theloid in phanaria sphagnum salvania and marchensia what is the common in all the trees phanaria dipterocteris and ginkgo so plant body in liverwort is haploid gametophytic small and dorsiventral flattened so d is marchensia is correct Theloid and Marchensia, and for this presence of Archegonia, it is common feature in all these three. So again, I am reminding you all of you guys. This is our Telegram link. You can join us. You can follow us on Telegram also. Results. You can see results overview here of MSE 2021 of NEET 2021. Nineteen students got admission in a medical. so these are your uh, homework questions guys solve these and post this in form of comments in chat box you can post it so diy homework solve it right now only five questions i am giving you just take a screen a screenshot of this and solve and uh, write the answers 1 a b c d 2 a b c d 3 a b c d in your chat box in your chat uh, description uh, in your comments If you like the video don't forget to like share and subscribe don't forget to press the bell icon for the notification guys thank you so much and do not forget to like share and subscribe and we I am I'll be waiting for your comments of your DIY of your homework questions thank you so much guys thank you so much.